Good evening, brothers and sisters. Come and join us as we pray the rosary and ask Mary, our mother, to intercede for our prayer petitions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Amen. Luminous Mysteries The first luminous mystery is the baptism of Christ. We offer this mystery for the churches all over the world and for our spiritual family, the Feast Bay Area District. May they continue to proclaim your word, especially in these trying times. We also pray for our feast builders, leaders, and co-servants that they may continue to minister, inspire, and serve, especially to those who are poor in spirit. Nurture their faith and keep the fire of love in their hearts, dear Lord. We also lift up to you our spiritual director, Father Bob McConaughey, our spiritual formator, Father Michael LaGuardia, and all the priests, that they may find joy and consolation in ministering to the souls. Mama Mary, our mother, we ask for your intercession to bless their labors, to bring them comfort in times of their needs, and to keep them within the mantle of your protection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The second luminous mystery is the wedding feast at Cana. We offer this mystery for the protection, strength, and comfort of those working in the frontliners, in the front lines, particularly our health workers, scientists, researchers, police officers, military, and the unprivileged who are struggling to work and live through these trying times. May they find joy in what they do, knowing that their sacrifices and suffering will never be put to waste. Mama Mary, Cover them and protect them with your mantle of love and unite their sacrifices and sufferings with the sufferings of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God. We offer this mystery for our country, for the Philippine government, and for all leaders of the different nations. Bless them with wisdom, patience, and will to guide and protect their people. Good Lord, grant them a humble heart to serve their people, especially those who are most in need. We ask, good Lord, that you fill their hearts with the right intentions and guide their mind for sound decisions. Mama Mary, we ask for your intercession Guide our leaders that they will follow your son in loving and serving the last, the least, and the lost. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, 
Please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. We offer this mystery for those who are affected by the recent calamities, together with those who struggle physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, and most especially spiritually. We pray that they may experience God's love and concern through the generosity of Christ's people in answering their needs. Grant them the strength and peace that they need in order to continue with their lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. The fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. We offer this mystery for the healing of individuals and families who are suffering right now. Those who are in the hospital fighting for their lives. May you grant them healing and strength, dear Lord. To the family members, grant them protection and comfort, O oh Lord. Those who are distressed due to this crisis, those who are anxious and depressed, grant them peace, dear Lord. We know that you are the God who heals, and we trust in you. Mama Mary, health of the sick, embrace all who are experiencing sickness in different aspects of their life, that they may return to good health under your loving care. 
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Mother Mary, through your intercession, we beg you, Please bring peace to our families, to our community, to our country, and to the whole world. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send upon our side, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious Advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile... Show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. We now pray the litany of the blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, 
Pray for us. Father of mercy. Pray for us. Father of divine grace. Pray for us. Mother most pure. Pray for us. Mother most chaste. Pray for us. Mother inviolate. Pray for us. Mother undefiled. Pray for us. Mother most amiable. Pray for us. Mother most admirable. Pray for Pray us. For us. Mother of good counsel. Pray for, Pray for us. us. Mother of our Creator. Pray for us. Mother of our Savior. Pray for us. Virgin most prudent. Pray for us. Virgin most venerable. Pray for us. Virgin most renowned. Pray for us. Virgin most powerful. Pray for us. Virgin most Merciful, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Re- mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Cause of our joy, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. Singular vessel of devotion. Pray for us. Mystical Rose. Pray for us. Tower of David. Pray for us. Tower of Ivory. Pray for us. House of Gold. Pray for us. Ark of the Covenant. Pray for, Pray for us. us. Gate of Heaven. Pray for Pray us. Pray for us. Morning star, pray, pray for, for us. us. Star of evangelization, pray for us. Health of the sick, pray for us. Refuge of sinners, pray for us. Solace of migrants, pray for us. Comforter of the afflicted, pray for us. Help of Christians. Pray for us. Queen of angels. Pray for us. Queen of patriarchs. Pray for us. Queen of prophets. Pray for us. Queen of apostles. Pray for us. Queen of martyrs. Pray for us. Queen of confessors. Pray for us. Pray for us. Queen of virgins. Pray for us. Queen of all saints. Pray for us. Queen conceived without original sin. Pray for us. Queen assumed into heaven. Pray for us. Queen of the most holy rosary. Pray for us. Queen of the family. Pray for us. Queen of peace. Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in preparing for our liturgical Bible study. We will be returning after 10 minutes. So for the meantime, please ready your Biblia Konia kits, your Bible, notebook, and pen. See you later.
Ayan, good evening brothers and sisters. Kamusta ang lahat? Uh, I know na-miss niyo ako. Wow, <laughs> feeler. Actually, na-miss ko kayo last week because I was absent nga, di ba? Kasi nga, sabi nga ni Ka, di ba, it's the birthday celebration of my brother. So, binati pa si Raph. So, ngayon naman, si Ka is on a very important, um, may a very important siyang activity na ginagawa, no? Kasi alam naman natin si Ka, madaming ganap sa buhay. She's now doing something for her school. So, Ka, if you are watching or even listening to us tonight, thank you so much for for uh you know for uh covering for me last uh week ngayon ako naman bahala so but anyway to our brothers and sisters kamusta ang lahat good evening po sa inyo welcome to biblia kunia biblia kunia is the weekly formation of the feast ball of asia wherein tonight uh with the help of our beloved priests here at the feast and we're going to uh deep dive into the readings for the coming Sunday, chapter yung ating first and second reading, and of course, our ating gospel, and for us to see how they are related to each other. And of course, uh, hihimayin din siya so that we will have a, a full appreciation and better understanding of the Word of God. And with this, di ba, matutunan natin paano i-appreciate, paano mahalin ng mas malalim, at paano i-share itong Word of God with the rest of our friends, of families and loved ones. Speaking of share, sa mga nanonood ngayon sa ating Facebook Live and even YouTube, friends, please uh, share this live stream to uh, your Facebook accounts or even YouTube accounts so that mas madami ang mabless. No? Feel free to tag your friends in the comment section para ma-remind sila that Biblia Kunia is uh, already live ngayon. And syempre, magpapakalala ulit ako for the benefit of our first-timers. My, my name is uh, Brother Dean Amores and I am a servant of the Feast Mall of Asia. And again, speaking of Facebook, allow me also to uh, say hello and good evening sa ating mga loyal viewers, ating mga followers, likers, and of course, servants and attendees ng uh, Feast PICCAM, PICCPM, OPM, SM Manila, Ermita, Mall of Asia, and of course, nakikita din po tayo sa Facebook page ng Light of Jesus Family. And also, we are also uh, streaming live sa YouTube account ng Feast Mall of Asia. So friends, again, if you want to bless more people tonight, not just yourselves, no, please feel free to share this live stream so that many, many people will be blessed and uh, have a deeper sense of appreciation and understanding, again, sa Word of God. And with that, di ba, syempre, every Thursday, ang ginagawa natin is to ask uh, special questions. Di ba? So kung ang question ni ka last Thursday is, ano yung pinag-pray mo? for December. Kasi nga, di ba, December na imagine, parang uh, last week lang, March, nag-start ng lockdown, but ngayon, December na, and uh, in three months, March na ulit. So, uh, ang, ang bilis, ang bilis ng mga kaganapan ngayon. So, friends, our uh, special question for tonight is, how do you prepare for something special? Kasi nga, di ba, we are already approaching sa ating second Sunday of Advent season. And syempre, we know for a fact na Advent is all about preparing Diba? Preparation for the coming of Christ because it's Christmas. Diba? It's the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, kayo, kung meron kayong mga pinagahandaan or uh, you know, pinagpreparean na special occasion, special project, uh, big uh, something big, diba? how do you prepare for it? So I am very much interested and curious kung paano kayo naghahanda for those big moments in your life. No? So please uh, share them with us tonight no, by sending in your comments sa ating Facebook account because to try natin siyang basahin so that uh, ma- matuwa din naman yung mga nanonood sa atin. So again, our uh, special question for tonight, no? if you're preparing for some, if you're waiting for something big, big moment in your life, how do you prepare for it? Paano kayo naghahanda? Okay, so uh, to give you time to answer, ako naman, ang top of mind ko is, kasi galing akong office kanina, pumapasok na kami, di ba? So, Uh, if I'm preparing for a big uh, project sa office, uh, how do I prepare for it? Siyempre, pinag-aaralan ko yung report. ba? Diba? Kasi hindi naman pwede na pag mag-report ka na doon mo pa lang siya iintindihan. So, to prepare for it because it's something big, ba? Diba? Ang kaharap mo is yung mga, yung mga stakeholders, etc. Yung mga, yung mga office mates mo. Siyempre, you have to to be able to explain ba? Diba? yung presentation mo. That is by... Uh, researching, di ba? preparing for it, gagawin mo yung presentation mo, yung PowerPoint mo, so that uh, when they uh, attend your presentation, they will have a clear understanding as well of what your report is. So, ganun ako pagbanghanda sa isang uh, big office project that I uh, am doing sa office. So, kayo friends, uh, brothers and sisters tonight, no? how do you prepare for something big? 
uh, nagpapagupit ba kayo? Nagpapa-rebound? Nagpapaganda? Nag-research ba kayo? Nag-iipon ba kayo? So let me let me know para naman na uh, makakuha din kami ng tips, di ba? How to prepare for something big, for uh, something special. And with that, allow me to uh, say hello and good evening din sa ating mga uh, live viewers na ito yung ating mga early uh, commerce na hindi nawawala. Kasi I, I'm seeing a lot of regular names na yan, no? Uh, good evening sa inyo, Rachel Lynn, na tinag yung kanyang friend na si Mars Charisma. Mars, sabi niya, Mars, log in ka na Mars sa Facebook kasi start yung Biblia ko niya. Good evening sa inyo, sabi ni Sis Patricia De Yuda, who is our top fan sa Facebook and is also a regular attendee of Biblia ko niya. Hello. Di ba, simple lang, sabi niya, hello. Yes, Sis Patricia, alam namin na nakatuto ka and uh, we hope that you're also able to share this uh, you know, blessing to your family, friends, and loved ones. Sabi niya, Sis Sha, Escarlan. Hi, Adit Patricia. For sure, friends sila nito. And eto, 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 eto. Sabi ni Mark Lee Isidro, I am waiting for our 13th month. Ang question ko naman sa iyo, Brother Lee, paano ka naghahanda? Diba? Ano yung mga plans mo pagdating ng 13th month? How are you preparing para sa pag-aantay mo sa, ano, sa 13th month? Diba? So, kwento niyo naman sa amin. So, again, friends, share in the comment section ngayon yung ating mga Uh, live viewers, no? how do you prepare for something special in your life? May this be a big moment, big project, di ba, na pinagahandaan mo. So, paano ka naghahanda? Para makakuha naman kami ng tips. But anyway, friends, no? so tonight, no? uh, as I've mentioned during the start of this program, we are going to uh, read and understand better the readings for this coming Sunday. And syempre, along the way, upon listening sa ating priests tonight, may mga questions that will rise, no? Mapapaisip kayo, ba't ganito? Ba't ganyan? So, friends, ito na yung chance nyo because right after our formation session, after the, you know, teaching, uh, sharing of wisdom by our beloved priests tonight, we will be having a Q&A portion, question and answer, wherein yung mga questions ninyo about our talk tonight, about our reading, or anything about your faith, about your religion, about your relationship with the Lord, will uh, you know be answered by no less than our beloved priests here at the feast because syempre sila naman ang diba yung experts natin and uh, for some of us diba meron tayong mga curiosities na hindi tayo makakatulog at night diba may mga questions tayo na tayo ay mga bata pa so everything everything about faith no your relationship with god about christianity kung meron ka yung you know questions talaga na matagal yun ang tinikim ka our beloved priests will uh, be more than glad to answer them tonight because, of course, diba? ito naman yung ating purpose ng Biblia ko niya. Not only we learn to appreciate the Word of God, but we also try to answer those mind-boggling questions that you have with regards to faith in general. So friends, again, please feel free to send in your answers to my question earlier. How are you preparing for something special? Or if you have questions in mind already, as early as now, please feel free to send them in using the comment section of your Facebook accounts or kung kayo naman ay medyo, uh, you know, shy type, medyo shy type naman kayo, uh, you can send a, a private message sa ating uh, Feast Mall of Asia Facebook account. And also, kung meron kayong gustong ipabate tonight, di ba? Because it's December, baka may gusto kayong parang ganyan, feel free to comment uh, down then your greeting so that mabasa ko siya. And with that, allow me to continue saying hello and good evening sa ating mga live viewers. Again, eto, si Brother Michael. Good evening sa iyo, Brother Michael DM from Hawaii. Sis GJ Retulia, good evening din sa'yo. Sis Len, good evening. Sis A- Brother Amber, diba? Brother Amber, good evening sa'yo. And uh, Sis Beth Racho, magandang gabi sa lahat. Magandang gabi din sa'yo. Sabi ni ni uh, Brother Vincent Batino, pray to God for guidance. Tama naman, diba? Kasi if we are preparing for something big, diba? Gabi yung preparation natin, mag-aaral tayo. Pagpapagura natin yan, ang iba nga sa atin, hindi pa natutulog just to prepare for something big. But at the end of the day, diba, we have done our part and now si God naman. Ibibigay, ipapasa natin kay God yung bola. Lord, I've done everything. I've done my part. It's now up to you. Tulungan mo, nga, tulungan mo ako ngayon because I've done my part, Lord. Nasa sa iyo na. Kung how will you uh, help me uh, pull this uh, off, diba? Paano ko itatawid itong big project na pinagandaan ko? So thank you for that. Diba? Thank you for that reminder also, Vince, to always pray for God's guidance at the end of the day. And, ayan. Yes, Zach, Zach Pe. Hello to you, Zach. Hello to Jan and baby Zoe. Yes, 
live din po tayo sa YouTube, uh, friends. No? So, napupunod po tayo, not only in the Philippines, but we are also seen worldwide because of the World Wide Web. This is the new normal. What we want here at the Feast is to be able to still connect with you and engage with you regardless of the lockdown, regardless of the quarantine. And uh, this is one of the gifts that this quarantine has uh, given to us all. So, friends, again, this is Bablia Kunia. Tonight is very, some, it's very special because, again, we're going to uh, read and understand well our readings for this Sunday so that for the coming Sunday, tayo ay mas nakapaghanda na, mas prepared na tayo and uh, with the hope of being able to share as well the learnings that we will be having tonight with our uh, friends, families, and uh, loved ones. And so, ayan. And so, um, without much further ado, uh, brothers and sisters, I know all of us here are excited na to start this uh, special night of formation. And so, simulan po natin by, uh, a, open, by an opening prayer to be led by our Feast Mall of Asia Formation Ministry Head na nakasama din natin sa Rosary kanina. Friends, bigyan ho natin ng madaming heart emojis, di ba? Pusuan ho natin, Brother Ace po na. Thank you. All right, so everyone, uh, let's pray. And remember that we are in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we thank you. And we praise you. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, we pray that you continue to be with us in this time of the pandemic. We pray for those who are, are battling the, the disease, Lord, the, the virus. And we also pray for those who have succumbed to, to COVID-19, Lord. And we pray especially for their families that they left behind. Continue to be with them. May they feel your comfort and your love, Lord. And Lord, during this time of Advent season in 2020, we pray that despite of all our struggles, all of our worries, all of our pains, or whatever desert we are into, Lord, just like John the Baptist, we pray that we can focus on you, Lord. Focus on your message to us. Lord, give us the Holy Spirit so that we may, we may receive your message to us tonight, Lord. Your special, your special message only for us, your word that is specifically intended for us, Lord. And may we put it in our hearts just like Mama Mary. Lord, we also continue to pray for our dear priests, Father Bob and Father Mike. Use them mightily, Lord. Use them as your instruments to minister to us, your people. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your grace, Lord. So that they may be channels of your love towards us, your people. Mama Mary, continue to intercede for us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Ace, for uh, that very wonderful prayer as always. So friends, before we uh, continue with our formation, diba, um, allow me to read this ano lang, comment from one of our viewers. This one is from Sister Joy Malata. Sabi niya, to prepare for Christmas, I have joined an online Catholic Advent pilgrimage, a one-hour daily inspiring talk. Wow, that's good, Sis Joy, no? Na, uh, as we are approaching the birth of Christ, di ba? Nagkakaroon tayo ng mga chances to reflect. But then, di ba? Hindi lang, syempre, we know for a fact, di ba, yun, 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 yung pag-reflect is not only done during Lent. Uh, di ba? Uh, Christmas or the birth of Christ is actually the highlights. Diba? Kasi yun yung kapanganakan ni Jesus. And hope, we hope, Sister Joy, that you're able to share, di ba, sana yung link ng Catholic Advent Pilgrimage na yan. It's just a one-hour talk, di ba? Sana ma-share mo din sa comment so that mas madami din ang maka-attend with you, di ba, in this uh, Advent Pilgrimage. Thank you for that, Sis Joy. And by the way, pala, brothers and sisters, I mentioned earlier na live tayo sa YouTube. Hindi pala. Not tonight because nagkaroon na tayo ng technical difficulty. But again, we are uh, streaming live, no? sa Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page. And also, we are seen sa mga several Facebook pages ng Feast Bay Area Districts. Yun nga, yung ating uh, Feast uh, PICCAN, PICCPM, OPM, SM Manila, Ermita Mall of Asia, and even Light of Jesus 
a family Facebook page of friends. Again, we encourage you to share and, uh, you know, tag your friends so that mas madami ang mabless. At managdagan pa yung ating 120-ish na live viewers tonight. And also, allow me to give a special feast thank you sa mga nagsasend sa atin ng stars, di ba? Because, uh, you know, it's a way to thank their generosity. So thank you to you, uh, Sis Patricia, for, for sending stars and for your generosity. Definitely, mas madami ang mabless with the blessings that you have shared with, with the Feast Mall of Asia. Okay, friends, brothers and sisters, without much further ado, let's begin this night of formation by, uh, you know, giving again. Ito naman kung kanina heart emojis ngayon naman, bigyan natin ng care, care uh, reactions. Yung ating Feast Mall of Asia spiritual, hindi pala Feast Mall of Asia lamang, Feast Bay Area District's uh, spiritual uh, formator. Friends, again, bigyan natin ng uh, madaming care reactions Father Michael Laguardia Hi Dean Hi Father I missed you Thank- <laughs> Yeah we missed you last week but Thank we're you. happy you're here with us to do the MCing Thank you Yes and also to uh, guide us for the Q&A Good evening brothers and sisters welcome once again to another edition of the Biblia Konia uh, That was a beautiful question that Dean asked how do you prepare for something big because tonight, in preparation for this coming Sunday, a liturgy, a liturgical readings would talk about something big and somebody who prepared for something big. We're talking about St. John the Baptist. This coming Sunday will be the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. And uh, we have started a new liturgical season. We're in the season of Advent. We have also started a new liturgical year. And if we were reading from Matthew for the past Biblia Chonia sessions and in preparation for the Sunday Gospel, of course, um, this new liturgical year we are reading from Mark. And so that would be the gospel reading for this coming Sunday. Mark 1, verses 1 to 8. And you have this title, The Baptist Prepares the Way. All right, let's open our Bibles to the gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And let's follow the reading to be led, read aloud by Dean. Yes, Dean. Thank you, Father Mike. Brothers and sisters, the gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Dean. Let's do our liturgical Bible study. This will be our exegesis reading the text in context to understand and appreciate better the gospel reading in connection with the first reading and the second reading and even the responsorial psalm for this coming Sunday. Verse 1 of chapter 1 would have this line, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We are, in fact, in the beginning because this is chapter 1, verse 1 of the second gospel. 
the Markan Gospel or the Gospel according to St. Mark. And we get to know this even when we were still doing our studies, when we go through and listen to and read stories, we know that the beginning and the ending of a literary work are always important. Right? So you don't skip the beginning and you don't miss the ending. Okay? They are vital in the whole story. And so we are in the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. This first verse, chapter 1, verse 1, contains the essential elements of Mark's Christology, all right? That's a big word, Christology. Christology would be the study of Jesus the Christ. And so Mark would give us a portrait of Jesus. And we get to see the important elements of the Jesus Christ that Mark portrays in his gospel in the very first line, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God. Beginning, that's a beautiful word. It appears in the beginning. And this suggests an insistence on a slow and progressive establishment, not just of anything, but of the kingdom. And this is the kingdom of God. It's a dynamic development. You see how it is in the beginning. You don't sprint in the beginning, you don't rush in the beginning. You take it slowly, gradually. You're trying to pick up the momentum, okay? And so it begins with a slow pace, but it progresses as you go on. And the beginning also tells us of something new, though having a certain continuity with the past. If there's something that happened before, Okay, and you have a new beginning. That new beginning is something new. Of course, that's why you call it a beginning. But that would also have a link or a connection with what has gone before. Still on the beginning, this is familiar to us because that's also how the very first book of the Bible begins. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, and you would remember that was the title of our feast conference this year, in the beginning. The very first word of the Bible is this word, beginning. The very first word of the Gospel of Mark, beginning. And you would also check this out, the very first word of the Gospel of John, beginning. In the beginning was the word, right? Let's focus on Mark first. And when you say the beginning, then we're talking here in Mark because he gives us a portrait of Jesus, the beginning of the action of Jesus in the New Testament in general. And then mention was made of the gospel, right? Gospel. It's from the Greek evangelion. That's where you get the word evangelization, evangelical, evangelist. Evangelion is the gospel. What does that mean? That means good tidings, glad tidings, joyful tidings, good news, great news, happy news, joyful news. Okay, That's the gospel. You know, in antiquity, it referred the word gospel to the news of victory in the battle. That's a good news. Or news of a birth of someone especially of significance, or the enthronement of a new king. That's good news. That's evangelion. It also refers to a historical event which introduces a new situation in the world. That's good news because because of this event, it brings something new. There's a difference. We have a change from before to the now. There is a turning point, okay? That's the Evangelion. Still in the gospel, then we understand good news here is good news of God's kingship, the kingdom of God, which is realized in the kingship given to Jesus, all right? Who is this Jesus? 
the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In Mark, in the gospel that we're reading, the glad tidings is not something. The glad tidings is someone. It is not a thing. It is a person. The glad tidings, the good news is Jesus. And Jesus will introduce a new situation in our world. Jesus is proclaimed in the very first verse of the Gospel of Mark with two titles. And the two titles outline the two main parts of Mark's Gospel. You know, this is interesting. The very first verse of the Gospel of Mark will talk about Jesus. And Jesus is declared, proclaimed, described with two titles, appellations. And the two titles are already the two parts of the Gospel of Mark. We can divide the Gospel of Mark into two parts. What are these two titles? You find the two titles in the very first verse. The Christ, right? the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus, the Christ. If we are to see that as a part, the first part of the Gospel of Mark, that would be chapter 1, verse 1. Leading to until chapter 8, verse 30. That would be the first part. And in fact, you get to see the title, The Christ, specifically in this place. Chapter 8, verse 20 of Mark. That's the first title. That's the first part. The second title, The Son of God. And this will be the second part of the Gospel of Mark from chapter 8, verse 31, all until the very last, chapter 16, verse 8. And you would see this title specifically cited and mentioned in chapter 15, verse 39. Let's talk about the first title, Christ. We've, we've gotten used to calling Jesus as Christ. Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we might think before, or maybe some would even think of him, of the title as now, uh, that Christ is the surname. Jesus is the first name, and Christ is the surname. That's a usual misunderstanding. Jesus Christ. And then we would wonder why Mary has a different surname. If Mary is the mother of Jesus, then she should also have the surname Christ. Will that explain why we, call, we greet each other Mary Christ? But what's, what about the Mass? Mary Christmas. Okay. So it must not complicated now. Now, Christ is not a name. Originally, it was not a name, but a title. And Christ as title means the anointed one. Ang hinirang. The one consecrated by anointing. Consecration means to be made holy or sacred. And how do you consecrate? By anointing. The one consecrated by anointing. Ito yung nabahiran ng langis. Yung nabahiran ng langis ay napapabanal. Lalo na kung sagradong ritual ang ginamit. A sacred ritual that was used. Okay, so the Christ is actually a title. Jesus, the Christ. What does that mean? Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the one consecrated by anointing. And so that points to the royal anointing of the future Savior promised to Israel. God promised a Savior. Savior for all humanity. Salvation from our sins promise to Israel. And when God made that promise, Israel believed that that promise will be fulfilled. As to when, they didn't know. But that is sure to be fulfilled. And that was fulfilled in the person of Jesus. All right. Jesus, the Christ, right? Ang Cristo. Ayun. So originally, it was not a name. It was a title. But Eventually, the title became a name so that we call Jesus no longer as the Christ, but we actually call him Christ. 
we refer to him as Christ. We pray to him as Christ, Christ our Savior, Christ our hope. Still on the title Christ, this title is with heavy Jewish background. The Jews know this very well. They were waiting for the Christ, expecting the Christ. And it goes back to the Mashiach expected to come to make things better for the people of God. That sounds familiar, Mashiach. That is the Messiah. So the Christ also means the Messiah. Jesus, the Christ. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, the Messiah. Si Jesus na Cristo. Si Jesus na hiniram. Si Jesus na Messias. The second title is Son of God. We have heard of Jesus referring to himself. In fact, we were saying that's the favorite title of Jesus when he refers to himself, the Son of Man. Now here, first chapter, first verse of the first chapter of Mark, you get to see this title, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And this title definitively expresses the divinity of Jesus. Jesus is truly God, who became truly man. How much percentage would that be? 100% God, 100% man. It's not 50-50, right? So he's fully God and fully man. And the title Son of God points to that reality of Jesus as having a divine nature. Son of man would point to Jesus as having a human nature. So this is the second title, which would have the second part of the Gospel of Mark. What do we see here? Right from the start of Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, we as readers of his Gospel, we as listeners, are invited to see the events through the person of Jesus. So we are invited to have a Christocentric we focus on Jesus. We're invited to have a Christ point of view, a Christic point of view, to look at the gospel from the point of view of Jesus, through the person of Jesus. We are given a summary of the content of the preaching of the early church on the risen Lord. And what is the preaching of the early church? You call it the kerigma. And the kerigma about Jesus is... He is the Christ, and he is the Son of God. And after undergoing his passion and death, he had his resurrection. The risen Christ is the focus of the kerygma of the early church. Let's go to the second verse. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. It goes on. Verse 3, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Okay, let's understand these two verses. As it is written, that's what you find in verse 2. The quoted verses, verses 2 and 3, actually come from two prophetical works. Two works that are called prophetical books that you find in the Old Testament. What are these two? Malachi and Isaiah. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Would, there you would find the idea of the messenger. And if you check out Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, then you would have this crying out in the desert. The two were put together. In the two verses that you find in the Gospel of Mark, verses 2 and 3. In fact, Exodus 23, verse 20, you can check this out, tells of the promise of God to send a messenger on an exodus through the desert. Messenger, exodus, 
desert. Three key words in Exodus 23, verse 20. The messenger, the Lord, the desert. You find this now in the Gospel of Mark. And what does that tell us? The time of fulfillment has come. The themes in the Old Testament, particularly in Exodus, are now happening, becoming real, coming to be fulfilled in the Gospel of Mark. And that connects immediately to the first reading. Check this out once again. We were talking about Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verse 3. Okay, And that's the first reading for this coming Sunday. And the connection is something that cannot be missed out. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 5. And then it jumps to verses 9 to 11. So let's go back to the Old Testament and follow the reading to be read aloud once again by Dean. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says our God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service has ended, that her guilt is expiated, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice proclaims, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rugged land shall be a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up unto a high mountain, Zion, herald of good news. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem. Herald of good news, cry out, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom leading the use with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dean. What do we have here in the first reading? Isaiah prophesies about Israel going back to the promised land after the experience of that exile in Babylon and who will guide the people back home it's the Lord himself. That's what Isaiah would proclaim. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Especially when we reach this part, you get to see how connected that is with the gospel that we are reading and trying to understand. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Now, observe how the words have been divided. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, we read this. This is verse 3. A voice cries out. And what is the cry of this voice? In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Okay, that's Isaiah, the prophet. You remember how it was in the gospel? We will see that there was a kind of a change in the division of words. Okay. The response to the first reading, because the Lord would be the one to guide his people back home after the experience of the exile. This is the response to that first word, the first reading. Psalm 85 from the book of Psalms written by David. Our response is, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The God of salvation himself is the one who guides his people back home after the experience of the exile. 
A voice cries out in the desert. Okay, that's what we get to read in the gospel according to Mark. Look again at the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. So there is a striking change here. Mark's gospel makes a variance in the division of the text and so gives it a messianic sense. What are we saying here? Mark took that message that is found in the gospel, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the prophecy of Isaiah, and he varies the division of the text. Instead of a voice cries out in the desert, prepared the way of the Lord. It's a voice cries out in the desert and the message is prepare the way of the Lord. By doing so, Mark is pointing to something. There's a twist here in order to highlight the coming of the Messiah. The good news shifts from a voice heralding a new exodus to a voice proclaiming the coming of the Lord. And the message is prepare the way. This is a technical term in Christian and Jewish tradition that pertains to choosing the good, although difficult path as opposed to the immoral and easy path. We understand this. There's the good path. There's the evil path. And the good path is usually, more often than not, difficult. And the evil path is the easy path. So we say the easy way out. Okay. The Jewish tradition and the Christian tradition, when talking about prepare the way, that means choose the good path. No matter how difficult it is, stick to that path. And don't go for the easy path, which is actually an evil path. The early disciples of the Lord were called those who belonged to the way. This is interesting. When you say prepare the way, and that was the cry of the voice in the desert, prepare the way. Okay, that would also be in consonance with how the early disciples of the Lord, the early church, we're called those who belong to the way. It's a new way, new way of believing, new way of doing things, new way of living your life, new way of following the Lord. You find it in Acts 9 verse 2, the way. And so the way may refer not just to the right way, to the good way, but actually to Jesus' way, the way of the Lord. Prepare that way for the Lord. And verse 4 would identify who this messenger is. If in the book of the prophet Isaiah, that messenger can be anyone. It could be an angel. It could be somebody sent by God here in the gospel of Mark. That messenger is identified. John the Baptist. And he appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John the Baptist. Okay, Juan Bautista. When we get to see how he is called in English. Then we understand that Bautista. Is not actually the surname. Just like Christ. Okay, Bautista is actually his role. His mission. Because this John is the John that baptizes. Different from the John who wrote the gospel. That's John the Evangelist. Let's talk about this John the Baptist. You know, the appearance of John is significant. It's so important. It's so vital in the story. For more than 300 years, no prophet has arisen in Israel. There was the silence of the prophets. There was no prophecy heard for that length of time. And then all of a sudden, a prophet appears, John. We don't have any description of John's birth or his parentage. If you want the story of the birth of John, you don't find it in Mark. You would find it in Luke. 
Okay, we are in Mark, and Mark does not give us the story of his birth. Nothing, no details about his parentage. All of a sudden, John appears. And what's the point of Mark here? What is important for Mark is not anymore the infancy narrative of John. What is important is the role that John plays in the gospel. He plays the role of the Baptist. Behind the Baptist's appearance is all God's initiative. So no one prepared John except the Lord God himself. And we get to hear this expression, baptism of repentance. Let's understand this. You know, baptisma in the time of Jesus was understood as washing, dipping, paguhugas, paglulublob, immersion. And thus, metaphorically, that would mean cleansing and purification. We wash our hands in order to clean them, in order to purify them. Okay, we wash our clothes, we wash different things that we, especially what we use for eating. Okay, that's for cleansing and purification. In the time of Jesus, there was even a rise in interest to do the rite of washing and purification. What was the proof for this? We get to see the appearance of many pools, pools for immersion, pools for washing pools for having a dip in order to experience cleansing and purification. Now, John gives a common practice, purification, washing, cleansing. We call it ritual bathing, designed for cleansing from impurities. For example, from menstruation, a woman um, shed so much blood and so she needs to be purified in giving birth for example, or from contact with the corpse. You need to purify yourself. And John gives this common practice a new symbolic meaning. What's the symbolic meaning? Ritual bathing now serves as a public testimony of repentance, penitence for one's sins, the expression of one's sorrow for one's sins, and why are we repentant of our sins? Because we are preparing for the coming of God's kingdom. In Greek, we have this word, metanoia, which we pronounce in English as metanoia. Right? Metanoia. Meta means after or beyond, and nous would be the mind. Metanoia refers to conversion. This is change. But it's no ordinary change. It's when you change your shirt or you change the page of the book. This is radical change. This is change from within. This is the radical change of one's mind, pag-iisip, and one's heart, yung kalooban. And then mention was made of in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. The biblical concept of repentance, you know, is connected to the desert. Not only the mountain, but the desert will also be the place where you encounter God. Metanoia also signifies return to one's relationship with the Lord. Yung pagbabalik loob sa Diyos. A return to the desert, the experience of exodus. Return to the desert where we experienced God. The Exodus is a separation from Egypt. That was liberation from slavery. By passing through the waters to the desert. This is so beautiful. The Israelites were suffering because of their slavery. Slavery under the Egyptians. Pharaoh. And God made it so that they would experience liberation from slavery. How was that possible? With the instrumentality of water, the Red Sea, which he parted. And so they passed through the waters in order to make it to the desert, 
where they would experience God. And in the desert, okay, that's where Israel became God's people, his beloved children. He was the father taking care of his children, feeding them with manna in the morning and quails in the afternoon, satisfying their thirst, fighting for them, with them, against their enemies, and promising them a land overflowing with milk and honey. And this is how God becomes a father to them. And that connects beautifully with the second reading for this coming Sunday. We're reading from Peter, second letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 to 14. Okay, so from the Old Testament, book of the prophet Isaiah, let's go back to the New Testament. After the letters of Paul, you would have the letter of Peter. Okay, let's follow the reading to be read aloud once again by Dean But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that to the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but, all, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar and the elements will be dissolved by fire and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be solved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dean. What do we have here in the second reading? We have Peter reminding the Christians to take courage in spite of the delay in the Lord's coming. Especially when you get to read these lines in his letter, what sort of persons you ought to be conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire and he goes on but according to his promise we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells therefore beloved since you await these things be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace when we go back to the previous verse you get to see the words dissolved in flames, elements melted by fire. And we know that the fire that the St. Peter is talking about has the power to transform. Whatever fire touches is transformed. It's not the same as before. That's the transforming power of fire. The motive of fire sets ablaze and dissolve, and that talks about change. Fire transforms, fire changes. Again, the metanoia, the change of mind, the change of heart. And that's linked to the world. And so the admonition is, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him. Walk blamelessly before God. This is the attitude of Real waiting, waiting for the coming of the Lord. But this kind of waiting is done in the spirit of repentance. So that when the Lord comes, he would find us ready for him. 
this is the season of Advent that actually calls for this repentance as a spirit. And then we continue the verse of the gospel. People of the world, the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him, John the Baptist that is, and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. The mention of the whole Judean countryside in Jerusalem expresses that this transformation, this change of mind and heart, this metanoia is an invitation for all. Whole Judean countryside, the whole of Jerusalem, they were flocking to John the Baptist. The acknowledgement of one's sins accompanies the ritual purification. You see, there is that movement of immersion in the river Jordan. But along with that psychomotor activity, the movement of the body in immersion, there's also the movement of the heart. And what is the movement of the heart? Acknowledgement of one's sins. I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins. That's the spirit that animates the people who were going and flocking to John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And we understand once change of mind or change of heart begins with this, one's admission of the need to change. I need to change my life. I need to change my perspective. I need to change my attitude. Real conversion would only happen when we admit that we are in need of conversion. If we keep on denying the need for conversion, then there would be no change of mind, no change of heart. I need no repentance, and so I would not repent. It all begins with that. Acknowledgement of the need to change. Admission that we are sinners in need of repentance. And so... Metanoia is not only a change of mind or a change of heart. It actually leads to a change of one's decisions in life. And I, when I change my decisions and I walk the way of the Lord, then that would be a change in my conduct of life. Pagbabagong buhay. Now, Mark gives us a description of John the Baptist in verse 6. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and honey. We have here the asceticism, the spirit of, um, of poverty, not misery. Okay, the spirit of simplicity, of John the Baptist, that strong sense of self-discipline in his asceticism and clothing, John appears as the new Elijah. You check this out, 2 Kings 1 verse 8, you would see that Elijah was also dressed up in that way and was also eating the same thing that John the Baptist was eating. So you would have the same description as dressed in camel's hair with the leather belt around his waist. What is Mark saying here? John is the new Elijah. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 and chapter 4 verses 5 to 6, Elijah is expected to return as the forerunner of the Messiah. You would remember the story of Elijah. He was just taken away from the company of Elisha, whom he was preparing as his successor in prophecy. And Elijah was taken away by a chariot of fire. And his followers, his disciples, no matter how much they exerted effort to look for him, could not find this body. And it is believed that Elijah would return. What is the role of Elijah when he returns to prepare the way of the Messiah. That's the role of the forerunner, the precursor. Elijah is to return. 
in fact, Jesus himself implicitly associates Elijah and John the Baptist. This is in Mark chapter 9, verse 9 to 13, when the disciples were asking Jesus after the confession of Peter about Jesus as the Christ, the son of the living God. The disciples were asking, why do the scribes say that Elijah would return? And the answer of Jesus, Elijah will return. In fact, he has returned. This is how you would find that. I tell you that Elijah has come and they did to him whatever they pleased as it is written of him. And that's how the disciples understood that Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. So it could be said, taking it from Jesus, that Elijah has returned in the person of John the Baptist, who prepares now the way for the Messiah, in the person of Jesus. Verse 7, and this is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thong of his sandals. This is the declaration of the Baptist, John. John the Baptist has been at work. He has been baptizing people. He has been preaching. He has been shouting out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. And has become popular. And how do we prove that? He had attracted so many followers, people who were asking for baptism. And going through the ritual of baptism, they were acknowledging their sins and repenting of them in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Now, John makes an admission, a humble one. And what did he say? One mightier than I is coming after me. Beautiful. I am not the one. It's not about me. That's what John is saying. One mightier than I is coming after me. In fact, I am not worthy to untie his sandals. You know, the task of untying the sandals is the task of a servant who would do it for his master. The master would not bend down to tie or untie his sandals. It would be the servant who would do that. And John says, not even that menial or humbling task of untying the sandal is to be done by me because I am not worthy. And then he goes on, I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's the difference between John the Baptist and the one who is to come. The anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, God promised to pour out his spirit in the time of salvation. That's the kairos, the time of salvation. And you find this in many parts of the Old Testament. That would be Joel chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 44, Ezekiel chapter 36, and Zechariah chapters 12 and 13. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism that the Messiah will do, is this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In other words, Isaiah, as he describes the journey of Israel in the desert, as one that is done under the guidance of the Spirit, is happening now. This new exodus, this return to the original relationship with God, this metanoia, this radical change of mind and heart, will be marked with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that would be the sign that the Messiah has come the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel for this coming Sunday and its connection with the first and second readings and the responsorial psalm. Let the word of God be a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. 
having studied the word of God, let's now pray with the word. And let's do that using the spiritual exercise called the Lexio Divina, sacred reading of the gospel. We begin with the first phase, the Lexio. And so we read once again the beginning of the gospel, according to Mark. And using our pens, we would underline, we would highlight, we would encircle or mark or write that word or phrase or verse or line that is kind of speaking to us directly. It has that effect or impact on us. It is that appeal. It's that part that inspires us or disturbs us. Let's spend two minutes for the Lexio part. now move to the next phase of the Lectio Divina, and this is the Meditatio. We will reflect on the gospel, particularly the lines or verses that we have specif specified, and see how connected that is with our life. We can even ask ourselves, why was I affected or moved? or inspired or disturbed by this part, it's actually reflecting on our life in light of the gospel that we have read. Let's spend three minutes for the meditatio.
We now move on to the next phase of the Lectio Divina, and this is the Oratio. And here we respond to the word that the God spoke to us. We do it in prayer. We bring our reflection to prayer, which is our loving conversation with God. We will talk to him here and tell him what we have realized, what we have discovered, what we have seen with our life in the light of the gospel that we have read. Let's bear our hearts to the Lord as we talk to him in prayer. Let's spend another three minutes for the oratio. phase of the Lectio Divina, and this is the Contemplatio. We are still in prayer in this loving conversation with God, but this time we would silence ourselves. We will stop talking and thinking and just rest in the presence of the Lord. But this is not a passive rest. This is a rest that listens to him. We would allow God to be the one to speak to our hearts this time. We have always done the talking now. We will do the listening. Invite him, our Lord Jesus, to speak to the depths of your heart and let him reveal to you, say to you, whatever it is that he wants to be conveyed to you in prayer. Let's rest in the Lord for another three minutes.
We have come to the end of our lecture, Divina. You can, of course, extend your conversation with God after this Bibliaconia, as you still spend some moments with the Lord tonight or even tomorrow or the days after. You can also extend to the Axio part, which is an addendum to the Lexia Divina. And this is all about reform. What is it that I need to change in my life? What is it that I would have to correct in order to align my life according to God's will? And along this line, I'd like to give you two questions to think about. What good news do I bring to people around me? That's how Mark begins his gospel. The beginning of the gospel. The beginning of the good news. That was also the message of John the Baptist. The good news is the Messiah is coming and so prepare the way. And so what good news do I bring to people around me? And when I say people, this is not people in the abstract. First and foremost would be the people who are near and dear to me. We can also talk about the people who are nearest and dearest to me. What good news do I bring to my children, to my parents? What good news do I bring to my wife or to my husband, to my siblings, to my relatives? And then the family extends. What good news do I bring to the community that I belong to? the society where I live, the church that I am a member of, what goodness do I bring to people that I encounter every day? And here's a second question. What change do I need to do in me as fruit of my repentance for my sins? This is all about metanoia, a change of mind and heart. I need to change. What is that change that I would have to do in order to show that I'm sincere about this business of repenting for my sins in preparation for the birth of our Savior? Blessed are they who listen to God's word and live by it day by day. Dean? Thank you. Yes, Father Mike. Uh, as always, thank you so much. Pero, Father Mike, uh, napaisip ako dun sa questions mo. <laughs> I, I, I thought all the while we were uh, the ones who give the question at the start of, of this program. Pero, wow. Uh, your, your, your talk ended with two mind-boggling questions. So, um, do I answer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to answer, Father. Yeah, there, yes. One of those uh -huh. two questions from you. Um, the first question is, uh, what good news do I bring to the people around me? Actually, Father Mike, and also for the rest of our brothers and sisters, you could also comment then their, your, your answers to those questions from Father Mike, and we would love to read them and uh, hope that we could share them also live. So again, the, question, the first question is, uh, what good news do I bring to people around me? Uh, actually, Father Mike, no, the, the first thing that came into my mind is um, for most people, we are the only gospel that they get to... We are the only Bible that they can read because they, they, they are not uh, really uh, you know, Bible readers or etc. But they, they get to have a glimpse of, of, the, of the Bible through our words, through our actions. So it, it got me thinking if Am I personifying Christ or am I personifying the Catholic Church uh, well enough for these people to also appreciate the Catholic Church that it should be appreciated? Uh, ayun lang. Uh, it, it got me thinking if, uh, if uh, I am able to, ano, to represent you know, the, the, our community, our faith to these people who are not really into it, but syempre, I, I want to influence them also. So ayun. Uh, wow. <laughs> Galing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure Marin yung ano, uh, perfect uh, you know, uh, sentence for that. I just forgot. Pero parang ganun siya. You are the only gospel that people can read. Parang, parang ganun, Father Mike. Okay. And uh, also, Father Mike, uh, key takeaway that I got from, from, from you tonight is uh, it's really uh, tough to, to prepare. Di ba? Parang 
ang sabi ni John is make make straight his path. It's not just cleaning the ano cleaning the 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 pathway. It's not that eh. Parang uh, you have to you cleanse yourself and uh, along the way it will not be easy. It will not be easy, but definitely it will be rewarding. Diba, par- diba? Kasi back back in back in back in grade school when I get to read the story, you know, when Jesus uh, when John baptizes uh, the people with water, para make straight his path. I just thought uh yung mga taong naka-cover doon sa ano sa daanan ni Christ gigilid lang. I just thought ganun lang yun. Make straight. Okay. Para walang ano, walang balakid, walang hurdle. But it's more about, you know, preparing yourself, cleansing yourself. And along the way, again, it is not easy. It will never be easy, but it will be rewarding. Ayan. Okay. <laughs> Dean, just a comment. That's yeah. why I was happy with the introductory question you gave mm-hmm. to our viewers. No? And, yes. and uh, for those who are watching us, there was no Um, script <laughs> yeah. to talk about. Uh, we didn't talk about the introductory question, but that was beautiful. That was mm-hmm. really something that initiated all right, mm-hmm. the liturgical Bible study. How do you prepare for something yeah. big? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, Actually, right. in the context of what we are doing, it's not just preparing for something big. It's preparing for someone great. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, I, that makes me even more excited for Christmas. <laughs> uh, I, I know Father Mike, our brothers and sister night are very much excited for for that um, holiday. Hindi na siya holiday, Father Mike. It's more than that, because we are coming. We, we are welcoming uh, our dear Christ Jesus. But Father Mike, and to the rest of our brothers and sisters, we hope that uh, you have uh, enjoyed you no know, and was able to get uh, more more knowledge and learning. From the wisdom of Father Mike, and we understand the merit of your questions that you have in mind, which are again, of course, related to tonight's word and uh, anything related as well with our faith, our religion. And so, brothers and sisters, ngayon, now is the time for them to be answered by no less than Father Michael Aguarja himself. Hindi pa ako sasagot. Why me, yon? Ano lang? It, it, it's Father Mike who will be answering, and we hope that uh, later on, as he Father Bob. Makana, we will also get to join us. I think may nagkaka problem lang with with the connection, I suppose. But uh, Father Mike, I now have uh, a somehow long list of uh, questions from our brothers and sisters, and uh, I guess they are very much excited to get uh, answers for these uh, questions. So, Father Mike, the question is: Ready, ka na ba? <laughs> <laughs> prepare the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. prepare the way. <laughs> And it will not be easy for for answers, Father Mike. It will be very rewarding. Okay, so Father Mike, thank you for that. And uh, this first question for the night is from Sister Gigi Angat. Sister Gigi, how are you? I I miss you, right? Sister Gigi, uh, question is: Good evening, Father Father Bob and Father Mike. How are we going to interpret the readings in the Bible, particularly the Book of Psalm? First and second readings that presented by verses, for example, Psalm chapter 119, verses 1 to 2, 3 to 4, 23 to 24. Allow me to read that particular verse and so on. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, testimonies who seek him with their whole heart, Who also do no who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Again, the question is: How are we going to interpret this particular readings or verses in the book of Psalm? Okay, thank you, Sis Gigi, for the question. Um, when we talk about blessedness, right? We associate that with the saints. But we also remember that that was a familiar word that Jesus used for a series of teachings that we have categorized as the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are those who mourn. Okay, so um, this is called the Beatitudes. We have reflected on that um, Sundays ago. And when we say happy are those whose way is blameless, that's also another way of saying blessed are those 
whose way is blameless. We are not just talking about the saints here. We are talking about those who strive towards living a blameless life. What do I mean by blameless life? We are all sinners. But you know that saints were sinners who kept on striving, who, who kept on trying to be faithful to the Lord. And when we strive towards that perfection, when we strive to remain blameless in His sight, when we strive to follow His will and live it in our lives, then that is our beatitude. That's what you find in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is some kind of a beatitude also in line with the beatitudes of our Lord. Mm -hmm. um, a while ago, I, I uh, mentioned that uh, prayer which you also find in the Gospels. Blessed are they, are they who listen to God's word and live by it day by day. That's the blessedness. We are blessed whenever we prepare the way for the Lord. We are blessed whenever we obey his word. We are blessed whenever we do his command to love God and to love others. This is our blessedness. And, and this happens every day as long as we remain faithful to that desire. You know, at times it's just what is left is just the desire because of our weaknesses, because of our struggles. As long as the desire is there, okay, it's still grace filled. That's still our blessedness. And when we respond to the grace of God, then how all the more blessed we would be. Yes. Wow. Beautiful, Father Mike. So you're saying, as long as there is a desire, you need a starting point and God will supply the, the grace that is needed. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that, Father Mike. And of course, thank you, Sister Gigi. For, for that question. Father Mark, before we proceed with our next question, uh, allow me to share this one from Sister Len Candelario. Uh, sinagot niya, sabi niya, um, be careful how you live your life. You may be the only Bible some people will ever read from William Thomas. So thank you, Sister mm -hmm. Len, for, uh, for uh, sharing, with that, sharing that with all of us. Diba? Yun yung inahanag ko paninang right sentence, <laughs> right words for my realization from Father Mike's question. Thank you, Ms. Len. This next question, Father Mike, uh, was sent privately and a very interesting question even. Why is Christmas celebrated in December 25? On December 25, where is it based? Because some Protestants say that it is not the exact date of the birth of Jesus. We really don't know exactly when Jesus was born. For all we know, it may not be December. For all we know, it may not be the 25th. But what is important is not the date that we have um, specified, but what is important is what we celebrate on that day. And again, I love saying this, what we celebrate is not just something. It's not just um, um, an event. It's not just something that happened in history. What we celebrate is a person. What we celebrate is Jesus. And in order to be able to um, focus on him, we decided liturgically to put it on a date. Okay, and that's December 25, right? So we won't go anymore into the details of uh, how we came up with that. Okay, it's not... The, that's true. It's not the exact date. But again, what is important is um, that we know what we are celebrating. And what we are celebrating is the love of God for us. He loved us so much that he gave us a gift. And that gift is his only son. So that we who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. That's John 316. Mm. And that's the central scriptural passage whenever we celebrate Christmas. Ilang days lang ba? 22 days before Christmas. Oh, you're counting. So you're excited <laughs> about it. Really? Because In... Father Mike, hindi lang siya dahil walang work. It's not just that, but it's something more than that. Diba? So we are again celebrating a person, which is Christ and not just a holiday per se. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that question to our anonymous uh, attendee. Next question, Father Mike, is from uh, Brother Rafi. 
Madueño, one of our regular viewers and attendees as well. The question is, uh, in relation to the question, in relation to transubstantiation, isn't it that angels dance and rejoice during consecration? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question, Brother Rafi. That's difficult to answer because mm -hmm. we don't see them. Yeah. And we also don't get to read that in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And all we can do is perhaps to uh, imagine how it would be. Yeah. But you know, more than dancing, I, I'd like to think that the angels are also in adoration. Because that's the most important part of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Transubstantiation is what happens, but the part is called the consecration. And that consecration, when all of us are kneeling, we can imagine that the angels are also kneeling in adoration because the Lord Jesus becomes really present body and soul, blood and divinity in our altars, in the form of bread. The appearance, the taste, the texture is still the same. But the substance has changed. That's the meaning of transubstantiation. Yung anyo, yung lasa, yung amoy, yung hugis, they have remained. These are the Appearances, the accidentals, but the substance, yung substantia, has changed. And Jesus, what he did more than 2,000 years ago, is doing it every time the priest would say, this is my body. This is my blood. And so the body, the bread becomes the body of Christ, and the wine becomes the blood of Christ. And at that moment... Um, instead of rejoicing and dancing around, I think that angels, the angels would be bowing their heads in adoration before our Eucharistic Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Father Mike and Brother Rafi for the question. Father Mike, if I may share to support the question of Brother Rafi, I just remembered now. Uh, when we had our first communion practice, mm -hmm. Sometime, I think almost 20 years ago. Well, <laughs> I remember what our religion teacher uh, shared with us that time is uh, during the actual practice. No? Uh, when we kneel down and when the priest uh, raises the, the host and the wine, our imagination should be the gates of the heavens are opening and the angels are rejoicing or celebrating. So I can really relate to the question of Brother Rafi. That's even up to now, Father Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, during during that uh, part of the mass, the tra transubstantiation, mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine that the gates are opening. Uh, may pa fireworks. You know, I have it. laboratory mood <laughs> talaga. So okay. it, it 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 motivates me to you know look forward to to that to to heaven. Parang ganon. It's it's mm -hmm. really something. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful moment to uh, to look forward to, diba? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if you have chanced on that kind of video it's also powerfully done it shows people who are attending participating in the holy mass mm -hmm. and all of a sudden during the offertory okay those who had pure visions were able yeah. to see angels moving from the back part of the church moving forward especially when uh, the congregation was singing the holy mm -hmm. And angels were passing by the faithful and they took their positions around the altar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And during the consecration, okay, that was the moment when they were in adoration before yes. our Eucharistic Lord. Okay, that yes. was a powerful mm -hmm. uh, video. You, mm -hmm. you, I think it's still available in the YouTube. Yeah, I, I, I okay, guess it would Father, give you the, the goosebump. Uh -huh. uh, effect of it, the experience of it, grabe, nakaka, <laughs> <laughs> nakakayanig yung, yung the yeah. thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. This video is helping us um, see what <laughs> we mm -hmm. would want to see maybe. But more than wanting to see the angels, how beautiful it is if we would see beyond 
mm-hmm. the bread and wine and really exactly. see the Lord Jesus himself. Yes, very beautiful, Father. And I hope our live viewers, if you happen to uh, to see that video as well, share with us the link para ma-share natin sa ating mga viewers tonight. Yeah. Thank you. And this next question, Father Mike, is from Sister Eliza C. Of course, one of our regular viewers as well. Um, Father Mike, I think this question was asked uh, during November 19 episode. Uh, the question is, I tell you, in last night's reading that's pertaining to November 19, Jesus said, I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refuse to help me. How do we know if these least important ones is Jesus and not the bad people who are just trying to get our sympathy, but their only main purpose is to cheat on us? Yeah, it's. I can relate to it. Eliza, sis Eliza, about the question. It's so difficult, especially when you are made to understand that there could be something fishy or, or something that is not um, according to the right way of doing it is happening. Okay, say for example, you you are you are um, on your way to a place and in a traffic situation there would be a woman carrying a baby knocking on the window of your car and asking for alms, all right? So the question is, would you give alms to this person? And we have read or heard of so many things that this could be part of a syndicate Mm -hmm. of, of people in charge of all these dependence on alms, on, on intersections, especially when there's traffic. And when, when you get to also um, um, try to reason out, if this is a real mother and that is her baby, she wouldn't expose her baby to the elements around, to the sunlight, to the, the heat, to the rain, and to the dust and to the pollution around the mother would really protect her child, but the child is so exposed. In fact, here's another thing. Have you ever noticed that the babies that they're carrying are so well behaved? Mm-hmm. They are not crying. And for any experience of inconvenience, you know, a baby would cry. So what's going on here? And so people in the know would tell us that, well, uh, here's something that they the, the babies have been treated to something that would make them behave like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when sociologists would say when you give them arms, you are condemning them to the streets because they would know they know that there's money in the street and they would not leave the streets. If you want to help them, then don't give them something or give them food, not give them money. Okay, but still they know there's food in the streets. So do I give or not? If I don't give because I have these in mind, then I am disturbed also within. What if it were Jesus? What if it were a real needy mother and a real needy child? So where do I draw the line? How do I draw the line? What do I do? All right, here is where we can decide for ourselves. If we are to make a choice, for example, in that particular situation, it's up to us, but maybe we can choose to be in the side of, of charity. I give and I do it in that spirit that I am helping this person thinking that it may be the Lord yeah. in disguise. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this out of love for my Lord. Whatever you do to the least of your brothers and sisters, you do to me. And so I do it for the Lord. If this person is cheating me, then... Bahala na siya. But what I did is I did it in the spirit of charity and generosity. And I did it in that spirit animated by love. I do it for the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's a different thing if you know through and through that this person is a cheat. And there's no reasonable doubt whatsoever. Yung alam mong sure, na sure ka niloloko ka lang, then you don't give to this person. Mm-hmm. Right. In case of doubt then what I'm saying is we can incline towards the more charitable part. 
-hmm. After all, what I give to that person, even if it lands in wrong hands, is yeah. done for the Lord. So, Father Mike, um, mm -hmm. we are not saying that we should not help these uh, street dwellers. It's not the case. Um, I think, uh, based on your answer, Father Mike, it's really up to our. It's really up to our conscience. If we it, really it's, want to help, yes, you. it's up to your conscience. You follow your conscience. Mm -hmm. Okay, your your conscience tells you. Um, I'm not sure about the sincerity mm -hmm. or authenticity of this person, but I cannot just pass this person by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I give what I can give. Oh, so many times it is, uh, the, the, the more practical thing is don't give money, but give food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would mm -hmm. be better. Yes. That I, alleviates I, the hunger of that person, even for some time. Okay. But uh, yeah. Oh, the problem is if you don't have any food with you. Yeah. So you're left with with money. Yeah, I think, Father Mike, it's best to always bring a small piece of bread <laughs> or a pack of crackers with you, right? Yeah, or something that maybe, you can give. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Father Mike, uh, sa, ano, Edsa, it's, it's Christmas season. Right? Many, many street dwellers are already, you know, in the in the move to to ask help from people. Or maybe... If uh, our brothers and sisters would really want to help uh, while being sure that it will fall into good hands, we have a lot of mercy ministries, right, Father Mike? Yes. Uh, under the light of Jesus, our feast uh, family, mm -hmm. like uh, that, that uh, Caritas Manila, etc. So, brothers and sisters, we have uh, reasons to uh, share our blessings to the least fortunate. It's you know, it's uh, now a good time to do that because not only mm -hmm. is it it's the pandemic uh, season, but it's of course, Christmas season, a time for giving, a time for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, so the rule of thumb, you're correct in that, Dean. The rule of thumb would be follow your conscience, yeah. which we have learned is that little voice within. Yes, and yes. when we were kids, we were taught that that would be the voice of God. Yes. Okay, so long as, here's the point, so long as that is an enlightened conscience. Okay? Yes. Because there's also the doubtful conscience you don't know uh -huh. or the scrupulous conscience you see sin everywhere or the lax conscience uh, you don't see sin in anything yes. that you're doing even if it's already going against god's will okay lang yan. that's the lax mm. conscience mm -hmm. follow your conscience follow your conscience thank you thank you for that father mike and thank you sister eliza for eliza. the question eliza this next question father mike is from chris corpus very relevant these days Good evening, Father Mike and Father Bob. I would like to ask regarding COVID vaccines. Is it ethical to receive a vaccine that is using cell lines from aborted babies? Because I've read there are pharmaceuticals that will release these vaccines next year. Thank you. Yes. Um, this is a difficult question to answer, Chris. And... Um, this is based on what you have read. My question is how truthful yeah. is the article that you have read? Mm -hmm. Okay, how do we authenticate that? Right. Okay, and it's so difficult to um, moralize on something if we are not sure about the authenticity of that. Totoo ba na ganun yung nangyayari? Right, kasi kung hindi naman, then um, this is a hypothetical question. Um, is it really the case that the vaccine for uh, as remedy for the COVID-19, the virus, is really coming from uh, aborted, the parts of the aborted babies? We don't know. Okay, And, and you know for a fact that there are so many information, flux of information that we get to receive, yeah. they're all over. Mm -hmm. And we would have to scrutinize which one is true, which one is not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I, or maybe if uh, Chris Corpus will be able to share, you know, that link for us to read also, that will help, I, I guess. But nevertheless, thank you so much. 
uh, Chris Corpus yeah. for that question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if we get the link, kasi, yeah. we, we don't know how true yeah. okay, mm -hmm. that would be. Okay. If, if this yeah. were a moral issue that we would have to discuss, yes. right, mm -hmm. then um, if it were true, then what's going on is we are making use of a procedure mm -hmm. that was in the first place immoral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's making use of aborted yes, babies yes. that in the first place should not have been aborted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree on that, Father Mike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Next question is uh, from Sister Elmi Grace Genita. The question is, as Catholics, is it correct or right to believe in karma? Okay. Karma is not Catholic. It's mm -hmm. not Christian. It's Buddhist in origin. Okay. Uh, although we would say that what you... Uh, so is also what you would reap, okay? But that's not really karma as the karmic principle of the Buddhists. Uh, in fact, if you talk about karma, this is based on um, this is based on a fatalistic way of looking at things. This is even contrary to the idea of God is in charge, God who is merciful and who is loving, will not allow evil to befall on you. Mm -hmm. All because of karma. Yan na karma ka. Okay, mm -hmm. it's true that the, what, yeah, as what we were saying, what you sow is what you reap. Yes. Okay, but uh, we are also so many times victims of the wrong choices and wrong decisions and wrong actions of others. And that makes us victims. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's not actually our doing in the first place. So, as far as the question is concerned, we, we don't believe in the karmic principle. Hindi mm -hmm. karma. Walang karma. Walang tadhana. <laughs> and that thing called tadhana. Because that means God is not <laughs> in charge. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yung, yung mga threat na makakarma ka rin. Uh -huh. yung, uh, babalik sa yan. Yung ganun. Uh, bahala mm -hmm. ng karma sa iyo. You see, instead of talking about uh, the consequences of our wrong choices, we leave it to karma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Very uh, interesting question also. Thank you for that question, Sister Elmi Grace Genita. Okay, Father Mike, the next question uh, is related to our gospel last Thursday. This one is from Brother John Joshua Fernandez, who placed his question on our YouTube uh, account. Uh, Father Mike, let me share with you a line from an old gospel hymn. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to sing this song, Father Mike. <laughs> this, from is, this one is from Gordon Jensen. Keep your eyes up on the eastern sky. Lift up your head. Redemption draweth nigh. What is your reflection on this song line? I'm not familiar with the song. Yeah, I'm not Father familiar Mike. with this song at all. So, yeah. Uh, what's the beginning line of this? Keep keep your eyes up on the eastern keep sky. Keep your eyes up on, on the, the eastern east. sky. Okay, lift up your head. Redemption draw it nigh. Okay, right. redemption is near. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't be downcast. Don't be sad because redemption is near. So keep your head up high. Uh, that's also one line of one classical song. The title is... Mm -hmm. You'll never walk alone. Mm, that one. Yeah, so mas familiar <laughs> tayo dito. <laughs> okay. When you walk through the storm, right? hold your head up high or keep mm -hmm. your chin up high. Two versions. And don't be afraid of the dark. Yes. Yeah. It's all about hope. At the yeah. end of the storm is a golden sky. Amen. And the sweet silver song of a lark. The lark would sing beautifully again. Mm -hmm. Okay, once the storm is over. And so the refrain goes, walk on, walk on, 
Mm-hmm. With hope in your heart. Yes. Tumalo na sa ending. And you'll never walk alone. Okay? Yes. Redemption is at hand. Okay? That's also the message of the Lord. Uh-huh. The kingdom of God is at hand. So, do not be sad. Mm-hmm. Do not be downcast. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing mm-hmm. that. Yes. And actually, Father Mike, Ed, Brother Ed Sitar was able to share that the title of the song is Redemption Groweth Nine. Yeah. Draws, uh, that that's old English for redemption draws near. Draws near, yeah. Mm-hmm. Malapit old, na ang uh, ating English kaligtasan. Kasi? Yes. Mm-hmm. Malapit na ang 13th month. Nabigay na ba? <laughs> um, comment po kayo, brothers and sisters. <laughs> na receive na niya. <laughs> and I and I heard somebody say it said, "Obus na." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, question, for this uh, sharing of the song, Brother John Joshua Fernandez. Okay. This next question, Father Mike, is still related to our gospel last Thursday, November 26. And this one is from Brother Gino Semilia. Good evening, Father Mike, and good morning, Father Bob. This question, or before I ask my questions, let me give you a background. If there is a place I would like to go to in this world, that will be Iceland. And I would imagine that I would be overwhelmed with excitement just to be on the plane on the way there. Now, heaven is more than a hundred times better than Iceland. And the only way we can go there is by dying. The question is this. Why then should we be, why then should we be afraid of death, wherein we should be excited about it instead? Why do we mourn for the death of our loved ones wherein we should be celebrating them instead? First question. Second question is, every night before I go to bed, I pray that when I die, Father God, let me go straight to heaven. Let me die in the state of grace. Is it okay to pray that? Okay. Beautiful questions, actually. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this. Yes. Makes us reflect, makes us think. And the analogy is beautiful. Okay. Wanting to go to Iceland, it's the, it's the journey more than the destination that excites you. Okay. Then why are we not excited about mm-hmm. dying if that's the only way to go to heaven? Yeah, it reminds me of a retreat when I asked, who wants to go to heaven? And all the participants raised their hands. And when I said, who wants to die? And nobody raised his or her hand. And I said, but you don't get the point. You cannot go to heaven if you don't die. Right? So who, who wants to die? And then I got the reply from one. Uh, not yet, Father. Mm-hmm. Okay, we understand that. In order to go to heaven, we would have to die. But yes. not yet, because... We still have so many things to do. We are still enjoying life. We are still young. We, we are, yung, you, you get to see sayang, ang daming sayang na pagkakataon. Mm-hmm. You lose all the opportunities. Okay. And this makes us um, avoid death. And also because we don't want this end, not yet, not now, we are afraid of death. We are afraid because we are not prepared. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, we know this, but we forget. And so we are saddened when somebody dies. Um, think of it this way. Uh, we are sad because we won't have that person anymore with us. Life is and will never be the same again. Because you have lost a loved one, your family is no longer complete, and life would have to go on without that member. And so we are sad. And we are actually sad for ourselves. But if we think of the person who has passed on, and this person will no longer experience suffering and sadness and pain, Mm -hmm. and all that would be experienced by this person would be eternal peace, eternal joy, that bliss in the company of God, then we would be happy for that person. Okay? We, we tend to forget. We tend to forget that this is not the end all and be all of life. There's a more beautiful life that awaits us. 
Okay, but in order to go there, we would have to be prepared. And that's how the second question comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you can pray in that way. Um, when, when I die, Father God, let me go straight to heaven. Let me die in the state of grace. That's a prayer to ask for. In fact, you know, it, there's a, that's an old spiritual exercise. He called it preparation for a happy death. Yeah. You can pray for that grace, the grace of dying, a happy death. The grace of not dying, an unprovided death. The grace of not dying, an unprovided death. That's the opposite. That's the negative of it. Okay. So um, you can ask for that grace, Lord. I hope and pray that when I die, I am best prepared. Mm -hmm. And that means I have gone to confession. I have repented of my sins. I have been doing your will. I have been following the law of love. I have been generous. I have been a giving to others. Okay, a beautiful life. That would be my ticket okay, to heaven. Um, that prayer is meant to be accompanied by action. So I don't just pray that I may be in the state of grace. I would have to remain in the state of grace. And that connects with the question a while ago of Sister Gigi of, of yeah. walking blameless in God's sight. Okay, so you pray in that way, yes, but we would also have to do much in order to merit heaven. Yeah. And the best time to prepare is here and now. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful question from Brother Gino Semilia. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Gina. Okay. Next question, Father, is um, wala siya sa listahan natin, but uh, I happened to, to see this question in the comment section earlier. Uh, this was also addressed previously, but uh, this came up again tonight. How do we go to confession at this time of pandemic? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is an oft ask, often asked question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there are churches, parishes that have opened up and uh, accepting 30% of yeah. the community during the celebration of the Holy Mass. And so the protocols are still um, practiced, respected, distancing, and, and mask and all. Mm -hmm. okay. There are some churches that have also offered already the possibility of going to confession using the confessional boxes or still at a distance in a kind of a privacy that others would not hear when you say aloud your sins okay yes. but in the absence of that because again still of restrictions mm -hmm. okay what we can do is to make our confession directly to god yes. and do it the way we would do it sacramentally all right we we um enter into that conversation with god we make the sign of the cross and we can also say the formula. Bless me, mm -hmm. Father, God, for I have sinned. Okay, my last confession was, you can recall your last confession. Okay, these are my sins. And tell the Lord how sorry you are for every sin that you have confessed. Mm -hmm. And then listen with your heart and hear God say what the priest would be saying. Not anymore the advice okay, or the counsel, but those words of absolution. Yes. And I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Right. And you make the sign of the cross. You can do a penance. I pray one Hail Mary, one Our Father, one Glory Be. Okay. Or do an act of charity or an act of generosity. So that there's a social dimension of your confession. But know, know that at that moment, you have been forgiven by God. Yes. Now, when you get to have the chance later on, as uh, churches would open and the possibilities there for confession, then you can approach a priest and say that my last confession was a confession made directly to God. Mm -hmm. And if you want to still say what you have confessed before, 
Okay, you can still do so. Especially if you think you have, because of weakness, repeated that particular sin. Yes. This is how we are now. So in answer to questions like, is there an online confession? Answer is no. All sacraments, all sacraments are meant to be administered, mm -hmm. that is given, and received. Yeah. Physically, that means Yes. In person and personally, you are there. Oh, what about the mass? We have online masses. Yes, we have online mass, but no. Re realize this: that when it comes to communion, we cannot receive communion. It's still a spiritual communion. See, so we just participated in the ritual online. Okay, mm -hmm. going through the, the mass. Of course, it's, it's communion, but it's spiritual communion. Okay, it's, the, uh, it's an alternative, but it's not a substitute yes. to the sacramental communion. Mm -hmm. So, Father Mike, confess directly to God. Yes. Even the Pope said to do this. Uh, yes, that's Pope Francis. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And also for those who are um, dying and do not have the privilege of a priest with them for the anointing of the sick. Okay. They are forgiven their sins by God. And they also receive okay, the grace of the sacrament of holy anointing. They are prepared. God knows how to do that okay, in, in this uh, <clears throat> special time when we are helpless. Yes. And the grace of God abounds. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Whew. Okay. And uh, Father Mike, before we proceed to our last question for tonight, I'd just like to say hi to Father Bob McConaughey, who is watching live right now. Father Bob, <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> we hope to see you or to uh, have you next Thursday, Philippine time, Father Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sabini Father Bob, time for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast, Father. Yes, okay. Magkabilang mundo. But uh, this last question, Father Mike, is also from Brother John Joshua Fernandez. Kung kanina he shared a, a line from a song, ngayon naman he will be sharing a quote related okay. to tonight's gospel. The work of Reformation, the work of Reformation here brought to view by John the purging of heart and mind and soul is one that is needed by many who today profess to have the faith of Christ. From Ellen G on what is your thought? No, this one is from Ellen G. Uh, yeah, that is the name of the one who he gave that quote. So what is your thought on this, uh, Father Mike? The work of reformation here brought to view by, by John. John. Uh, Okay, John the Baptist, I take it. Mm -hmm. The purging of heart and mind and soul is one that is needed by many today. Is one that is needed by many who today profess to have the faith of Christ. Okay. My thought on this is we all need conversion. Mm -hmm. We believe in Jesus as the Christ, as the Son of God. But because of our human weakness, we fall and we fail to do exactly what he wants. We fail to uh, do and follow the law of love, loving God above all. So many times we love ourselves uh, on a Sunday, given Sunday, for example, of course, even if uh, the bishops have lifted that obligation to go for Sunday Mass, it's still uh, recommended and it would still uh, be a beautiful act of devotion to our Lord if we participate in the Mass, even if it's virtual or online. Okay, but because of fatigue or because I, my body needs to rest, then I, I miss it. Okay, then that's the time that I give in to... Uh, the call of the body. When, when I could make that sacrifice, there are 24 hours 
And the Lord is not asking for 24 hours. The Lord is asking for just one hour. Right? He gave us 24 hours. He gave us 10 days. He's asking for just one hour. And that one hour we at times cannot give to him. Right? Yeah. So this is weakness. Mm-hmm. I believe in Jesus, but I am weak. And so I feel. And so this is a point for conversion. Okay? That change of heart. The change of mind. I go for a Sunday Mass. I'm giving it as an example. I go for Sunday Mass, not because it is an obligation, not because the third commandment says so. That's a change of mind now. I do it not out of fear, not out of that kind of transaction. I go for the Mass so that I can ask for graces from the Lord. If I don't go for Mass, then I have no right to ask for graces. More than that, I go for the Mass because... I love the Lord and I want to spend even just an hour with him in the sacrament par excellence, the most beautiful, the greatest of all. Right. Then that is the purging of my mind and my heart. Then I get to love Jesus all the more. And so my faith becomes stronger and my love becomes deeper. <laughs> take a deep breath inhale exhale <laughs> thank you so much for answering those uh, beautiful questions Father Mike and of course thank you so much to our dear brothers and sisters who sent in your questions and we hope now for those who were not able to send them tonight you can anytime send us a private message at the Feast Mall of Asia Facebook page or you can tune in next Thursday for uh, another night of formation wherein you can again uh, send in your questions via uh, comments. So, at this point, uh, Father Mike, I know na beaten yung ating mga viewers tonight, but uh, well, uh, it's the end of our session just tonight, but we will definitely see each other next Thursday. So, for now, Father Mike, uh, can you please uh, uh, give us or lead us into uh, a closing prayer? Po? All right, I would love to. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest Lord, as we move closer to Christmas and it's already December, and as we prepare to light the second candle of the Advent wreath, signifying that it's already the second Sunday, and we get to hear the answer, the question, do we have the right to celebrate Christmas? Do we still have the excitement for Christmas? Is there still meaning in celebrating Christmas? Lord, we know we have reason to celebrate because what we celebrate is what you have done 2,000 years ago, offering yourself as a gift, as the Father's gift to us, offering yourself to us as our Savior. Help us to prepare for the celebration of your birth. Help us to heed the call of John the Baptist to prepare the way. Give us the grace, Lord, to prepare our hearts, to remove whatever speck and dust and dirt and garbage that is there that would make your rebirth not anymore in a manger, in a stable, but this time in our hearts. Help me purify my heart by repenting of my sins, by asking for pardon and striving to do exactly the opposite of the sins that I have committed. And that means to grow in grace and in virtue. But help me also to prepare by remaining faithful to the good things that I am doing. Living my vocation as a parent, as a child of my father, my mother, as a sibling, as a servant, as a professional. Help me to do my task, Lord, faithfully and generously. And I'd like to thank you, Lord, for the 
this mission that you have entrusted to us of feeding our brothers and sisters with your word. By studying word, your word and praying and trying to live out your word. Bless all those who are part of this ministry of the Biblia Kuniya. Bless all of us who desire to have a wonderful celebration of Christmas. No longer with the externalities of it, but focused on the essential. And that is you, our Lord, our Savior. Help us to find and rediscover the real meaning of Christmas. We make this prayer, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. And I bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, nakamute pala ako. Thank you so much, uh, Father Michael, for uh, you know sharing with us uh, your wisdom, your knowledge about the Word of God, and also for answering those questions from our live viewers, and of course, for leading us into our closing prayer. And... Dear brothers and sisters, hindi po dito nagtatapos yung ating online engagements, online bonding because we still have our weekday shows streaming live sa Feast Bay Area District Facebook pages. So we have, uh, saan yung ano natin? Tet? <laughs> For our weekday shows, there you go. Weekday shows on Mondays, we have our singles gig, singles gathering in God. On Tuesdays, Better Together for the Couples. On Wednesdays, we have After Party. Thursday, of course, is our very own Biblia Kunia. On Friday, Tonight, God is First, TGIF. And on Saturdays, we have our Fast Talk, that is Father and Son Talk Show with uh, Brother Alvin and Ayo Barcelona. So friends, these weekday shows are streaming every 8 o'clock in the evening uh, via Facebook pages of the Feast Bay Era Jersey. And from Monday to Saturdays, we go to our uh, Sunday, wherein we will be having our Feast Bay Area online schedule. Of course, meron dyan yung ating Holy Mass, worship, and talk from your uh, favorite Feast Bay Area district builders and uh, preachers. So there you can see on your screens, we have our uh, Sunday and uh, even Friday sessions for you to uh, watch at the conference of your homes with the uh, with the rest of your families and loved ones. So friends, magkakasama ho tayo mula Monday hanggang Sunday as we stay connected while we stay protected. And of course, brothers and sisters, please feel free to get in touch with our official communication lines. That is on Facebook, The Feast Mall of Asia, Instagram at The Feast Mall of Asia. You can also send us a text message by sending them to 0998-986-3662 or 0998-CHRIST-IN- FMOA or send us an email at info at the feast mall of Asia.com. And of course, allow me also to give a special thanks to our uh, stars sender tonight. Uh, we have Chris Corpus. Uh, I, I, I forgot to get the name of one sister earlier, but Babawi kami sa you next week. He also was able to take note of um, Sister Emily Bautista and Sister Kay Rabadon. Thank you so much for your generosity by sending stars on Facebook. This will go a long way sa ating mga uh, Mercy Ministries at the Feast uh, Bay Area District. And brothers and sisters, again, kung kayo po ay nabitin, definitely uh, you will still see me, see Father Mike, Father Bob, and of course, my partner, Carissa. Next Thursday, uh, November, no, hindi pa na November, December na kasi, December 10. And as we continue our formation series, and of course, third Sunday of Advent again. So, brothers and sisters, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight, adding live viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. We will still see you next Thursday. Thank you again, Father Mike, for tonight. And friends, we hope that you will continue to stay safe. Have a good rest. If mag na kayo, good night. And of course, God bless you, everybody. Salamat at ingat. Bye. Bye.